You see the particles? Yeah, they're pretty. It's so pretty. It looks pretty. Wow. And this is Lulu, and she's gonna assist me shooting the next shots. Hi! In my last fake 3D particles tutorial, I mentioned the limitations of the card dance effect to make the tiles always look at the camera. But here is another approach. Which, unlike in my previous technique, considers all camera axes. Ideal for 3D tracking the card dance effect into video and making the tiles auto-orient towards the camera. If you thought my intro looked choppy, it wasn't your bad internet connection. I accidentally shot the video footage with a slow shutter. But hey, I love music videos from the 80s. Ooh, I'm Let's delete my final rendering and start from scratch. Run a 3D camera tracker on your footage and drink a coffee while it's analyzing, because it takes a while. After the camera solving, you might increase the track point size to see them better. Then select at least three tracking points to determine a solid. Ideally, this would be somewhere in the center of your footage. Here I located the footprints of my kit. Then right click and create a solid and a camera. In the first place, we need the solid to check if the 3G tracking is rock solid. Secondly, we need it later as a reference point for the card dancer's position. But before I get to it, let's create something we can track into the footage. Let's say your main comp is 3840 pixels in its greatest extent, like in my case, because it's a 4K footage. Create a square size composition that is at least 3840 pixels by 3840 pixels, but better round it up to 4000 pixels, which is easier to calculate. Name the composition Grid and hit OK. Then let's create a shape we're gonna fill the grid with. It could be any shape, but I find a 3D sphere is best because it looks the same from every camera angle. To create a fake 3D sphere, select the Ellipse tool, double click on it, which creates a shape layer automatically, delete Stroke and Fill, add a Gradient Fill operator and change Gradient Type to Radial. Let's say we want a 5x5 grid. That's why we need the size of the sphere to be 4000 divided by 5, which is 800. But let's decrease the ellipse to 790 to have a safety zone when we later slice the grid. You already know this from my previous particle tutorial. Make sure that the gradient fill operator is within the ellipse group. That makes these handles accessible. Move the start point to the upper left to place the highlight and the end point to the lower right corner of the bounding box to position the shadow. In the gradient editor, you can tweak the gradient ramp so that the sphere gets more contrast and some fake ambient light in the shadow. Precompose the shape layer and name it shape. Go into the precomp settings and change its size to 800 by 800 pixels. To place it in the upper left corner, change the position to 400, 400, which is exactly the half of the precomp size. Then apply a CC rapid tile effect to it, and because we need four more spheres in the row and column, set expand right to 4 multiplied by 800, which is 3200, and expand down to the same value. If you want, you can add an adjustment layer, add masks around some spheres and apply a CC toner effect to it to colorize the spheres. For different colors, you can duplicate the adjustment layer, reposition the masks and adjust the CC toner effect. Back in the main comp, throw in the grid, apply a CC card dance effect to it and set rows and columns to 5. Then change camera system to comp camera, which adopts our 3D tracker camera. But as you can see, the grid is too big, and it seems that the grid is close to the camera and not positioned at our reference solid. We could use the position offset parameters to fix it, but I prefer another approach. Parent the 3D camera to the track solid and reset the solid's position. Now the card dance is precisely placed on the track solid. We can now scale down the track solid to make the camera get closer to the grid, which makes the spheres get bigger. Increase the Y position to lift the grid. And like in my previous particle tutorial, you can create a new solid, apply a turbulent noise effect to it and, if you like, animate the evolution. 
put the solid below the footage layer to hide it. In the car dance effect, set gradient layer 1 to the solid layer and change source to effects and masks, which also includes the turbulent noise effect. In X, Y and Z position, set source to intensity 1, taking the luminance values of the noise in gradient layer 1. To make the effect more visible, increase the multipliers to 10. Well, the spheres move a bit choppy. To fix this, we have to make sure that the comp is set to 8-bit. Then we need to increase the contrast of the turbulent noise effect, and to compensate for the extreme position change, lower down the multipliers. This looks a bit too regular for me, so I'm gonna go into turbulent noise again and try different random seeds. But you can also play around with the other attributes if you seek for another pattern. The last issue we have is that in the course of the camera movement, it becomes obvious that the spheres are actually on flat planes. And it's even more obvious when we add a solid composite effect before card dance. In my previous tutorial, it was enough to counter the camera's movement by changing the Y rotation offset into the opposite direction, taking the camera's Y rotation value and making it negative. And unfortunately, that method only worked for one axis. As you can see here, using the Y rotation isn't enough. We also need to include the other axis. To make the planes auto-orient towards the camera, we're gonna need a little workaround. The idea is to duplicate the track solid, making it auto-orient towards the camera, like I do here, and transfer the orientation values to the card dance effect. But the problem is, you can't see any value change here. The change happens internally, which makes it useless for us. The better approach requires a little expression, which is provided by the legendary expression guru Dan Eberts. Please copy it from the description below. Duplicate the track solid again, alt-click on the orientation stopwatch and paste the expression into the expression window. As you can see, the orientation not only changes with every frame, this method is even better than the built-in auto-orientation as the solid is totally planar to the camera, no matter where it sits in the composition. Then go into the card dance effect, open X rotation, grab the offset pick whip and drag it to the solid's orientation attribute. Value 0 in the brackets indicates that it adopted the orientation's X value. Copy the expression, open Y rotation, Alt-click the offset stopwatch, paste it into the expression window and change 0 to 1, which now refers to the orientation's Y rotation. Same with the Z rotation, but here we have to change the value to 2. Now toggle off the solids and hit play. The tiles took over the rotation values of the auto-oriented solid layer, making the flat planes always look at the camera. Let's rotate the camera to the extreme and it seems that the technique failed. But don't worry, we can fix it by changing Cardance's rotation order to ZYX. And now everything should be auto-oriented towards the camera. And that was the basic technique. In my version, I used slightly different turbulent noise values. With CC Sphere applied to the background plate, I faked the reflections in the balls. And with Production Crate's free light wrap plugin, I made the spheres better integrate into the footage. And I even considered the slow shutter by using a posterized time effect and adding some motion blur. And that's it, guys. See you next time.